How do you handle scientific disagreements on YouTube if your science is weak and you're losing the argument? You write a super long article knowing that most people will probably just glance at it and you hope that you'll bore them into thinking that you've said something meaningful. Hi, I'm Jeff Nelson and my wife and I started VegSource in 1996 after my wife put a life-threatening disease into remission with a vegan diet. Although I had studied English at Yale and at Stanford and had spent years producing TV movies and TV commercials, my life changed course after my wife's disease was cured through a plant-based diet. I decided to use my knowledge and curiosity to discover what nutritional research reveals and hopefully make it more understandable for other people. Today, I am giving a quick response to an article Dr. Joel Furman put up on his blog about me and about two of my recent videos on nuts. I'm gonna illustrate my discussion with this great streaming show that I watch on CBS All Access. It's called The Good Fight, and it's a show about a group of lawyers who are either defending a client or suing someone depending on who's paying the bills. And in one episode, they give a lesson of sorts on how to fool the jury when you have a terrible case and you're losing, I call it putting on a performance using bullshit. And in this case of the show, you have a lawyer who is representing a guilty client. Uh, he's got a bad case, the facts are hurting him. So the formula to try and use BS to get out of it is step number one, make a totally unsupported statement. So in the show, the lawyer has a witness on the stand who's hurting his client's case badly. So he's just going to suddenly accuse that witness of committing the crime that his own client is on trial for. At any of your meetings with Mr. Brody, did he ever mention covering up his involvement in the murder My of Tony? God, it's a simple Honor, question. Objection sustained. Oh, there was no objection. Objection? Sustained. Step number two, Request a sidebar. Set it up like you have something earth-shattering to reveal. Request a sidebar, Your Honor. What for? I have evidence that Mr. Brody may be covering up his own crime. Your Honor, I want I Mr. Know the court would want to rule on that evidence okay, before I'm allowed to approach. Step number three, the final step, bury them in bullshit. Of course, the point for the lawyer is to create a scene, to try to influence the jury when the lawyer actually has a terrible case and no good defense. When I signal you, become outraged. These, these are just photocopies of takeout menus. Uh, there are photocopies of takeout menus on both sides. At such time as this provides proof of Mr. Brody's guilt, I would ask that the court admit this into evidence. The hell are you talking about? This is wrong, Your Honor, wrong. You two have gone insane. Step back, get out of here, please. Take this. So this scene that we just watched, this is what Dr. Furman's response to me that he wrote reminds me of. He doesn't have much good evidence, so he uses this formula. Step one, make a totally unsupported statement. So there are a lot of them in his article, actually. He starts with this. Jeff Nelson made two more anti-nut videos recently, forcing me to comment again. It's clear the misinformation, distortions, and false accusations are reflective of his undisguised agenda. Well, my undisguised agenda is to expose sketchy corporate research. That does not involve misinformation. It does not involve distortion or false accusations. I'm talking about provable facts, whether something is true or false, black or white. That is my agenda. It's about the truth, not lies. I'm not anti-nut. And just for fun, this is another unsupported statement from Dr. Furman in his article. I was hoping to reach some of the leaders of this movement who are advocating this advice before it's too late so they do not become demented as they age like many of their followers have. Dr. Furman is saying that he's trying to reach other vegan doctors and save them from their own diet advice because the other vegan doctors are killing people. How nice of him. Wow, I'd like to know who he has contacted and what their response was specifically. Dr. Furman, I eat nuts, seeds, and avocados. 
In fact, I've eaten guacamole with the Esselstons. I've had peanut sauce at the McDougal's. I've had nuts and seeds and avocados at the McDougal program in Santa Rosa. Uh, they serve tofu, a lot of different types. They have tofu dressings, tofu lasagna, baked tofu, uh, tofu scrambled, tofu tacos, tofu mayo for sandwiches, tofu sour cream. All of these are higher fat items at their events and their programs. They are not fat phobic, not at all. And that's patently untrue. I've even had flax seeds from time to time at the McDougal Clinic. So why is Dr. Furman spending a lot of time trying to create straw man arguments. He invents that people eating a healthy diet like Esselstyn, McDougal, Bernard, Ornish, and the other low-fat diers. He's claiming that these doctors have zero foods with fat in them. Why make things up about other doctors? You can go to Dr. McDougal's website, for example, and just and see recipes from Mary McDougal for all the things that I just mentioned, which contain higher fat foods like nuts, seeds, tofu, and so on. Okay, so the second step for BSing your way out of a situation, remember that Dr. Furman is using this formula, is to request a sidebar, set it up like you have something earth shattering to reveal. And that was Dr. Furman sending out his newsletter and saying, Dr. Furman is again forced to respond to new videos that have been posted on YouTube by a group advocating an extremely low fat vegan lifestyle. That sounds ominous. He's being forced. Did someone put a gun to Dr. Furman's head and force him to put out a newsletter? Let me correct this now because it's just a complete fabrication. I am not a group. I create and control my content. I am not involved in a conspiracy with anyone. It sounds more important maybe for Dr. Furman to say he's responding to a group uh, rather than to just a single person analyzing studies. Why would Dr. Furman bother with that, right? So it has to be a group, but there is no group. It's just me. Okay, the third and final step is bury them in bullshit. This is what I'm seeing in Dr. Furman's latest response. Very long on words, but short on substance and evidence. Like the lawyer in that clip, he's making a sort of fake scene and hoping the jury, his followers, are swayed. First, Dr. Furman claims that, and now he, meaning me, claims he has proof that nuts are bad from a person he interviewed who used a pulse ray velocity machine. According to Dr. Furman, I am trying to prove that nuts are bad. Now, how many times have I said that I eat nuts? I think every video I've made about nuts, I've said that. Dr. Furman is setting up these straw man arguments and then batting them down. I have actually said repeatedly that nuts are healthy, and I've said it in every one of my videos on the subject. Now, what my series on nuts is about are two things. Number one, no nuts or a very low amount of nuts if you have heart disease. This is not hard to understand unless you're trying to avoid the real topic. The second point of my series is that nuts are not superfoods. This is the real disagreement, I guess, between Dr. Furman and me and pretty much everyone else out there and Dr. Furman. Dr. Furman claims that nuts will fight heart disease and they'll extend your life. They'll prevent dementia, they'll prevent uh, depression, that they're incredible foods, but that is not supported by any good research. It's just simply Dr. Furman saying it. That doesn't make it so. Exceptional claims require exceptional evidence, not a bunch of industry-funded population study fake research. Most vegans know that the many studies paid for by the egg industry that show eggs are healthy or won't hurt you, most vegans know better than to believe this kind of commercial science. They don't believe that eggs are healthy, despite these association studies used in these egg industry funded studies to promote eggs. The egg studies are done using the same statistical adjustments and calculations that are used for the nut studies. The idea that using these same statistical adjustments renders something reliable, like, you know, we can trust that eggs are healthy because they've been adjusted, that's just silly. Some vegans have fallen for the hundreds and hundreds of nut industry funded studies. They have wishful thinking about a food that they like and they check their skepticism at the door. They think, well, in this case, maybe the corporate research on nuts is true. Not on eggs, but on nuts. Maybe they're a superfood that uh, all by themselves do all kinds of magical things. Dr. Furman asserts that not eating nuts will hasten your demise. That that he's saying that a lack of nuts is quote unquote dangerous. Are there any other reputable medical professionals saying this? Is there anyone other than Dr. Furman saying this? Scaremongering, it may sell nuts. 
and it can sell useless supplements as well. Dr. Furman in his article goes on to say that the results Augusto DeAngelis got from the various tests he's done using the pulse wave velocity analysis, Dr. Furman says they're meaningless. Dr. Furman is speculating, of course, he doesn't actually know what Augusto has been doing with this test over the years. Augusto's tests are done by a technician trained by the machine's manufacturer, but Dr. Furman uh, seems to want his followers to believe that the technician in Japan doesn't know what he's doing. Of course, over the years, Augusto says he has experimented with pulse wave analysis using an Esselstyn type diet as his baseline and then adding and testing different foods and testing things like coffee, juice, nuts, exercise, sleep, and so on. And he's doing this, he has learned how to reliably get his arterial age down to the lowest number on the test. So he's basically lowered his risk of cardiovascular disease and dementia by learning how to maximize his arterial elasticity. Now he taught himself with these tests which foods raise arterial stiffness and which ones don't. Fatty foods raise stiffness, including nuts. Greens and complex carbs don't. Processed carbs can also raise stiffness because they can raise triglycerides. A lot of people being tested by the pulse wave velocity, they are eating the standard Western diet. So adding food like nuts to their diet may or may not give a signal due to the artery stiffening that they're already experiencing from their regular diet. The best analogy are egg studies. People with high cholesterol to start with, give them eggs three times a week. Their high cholesterol doesn't get any higher. So researchers might conclude, well, eggs don't affect cholesterol. But take someone like Augusto with very low cholesterol and a very healthy diet, give him eggs three times a week, and it would definitely raise his cholesterol as well as impairing his arteries. So that would reveal the true impact of eggs. And so using the pulse wave velocity on people eating healthy diets like Dr. Esselstyn's diet, now we have a chance to see the true impact of things like nuts on arterial stiffness. This is a cutting edge idea and should be expanded into a much larger group of people to test. When Dr. Esselstyn heard about Augusto's test results, he wanted to talk to Augusto himself. He asked a lot of questions, find out how many tests Augusto has done and suggest some more tests that Augusto might try to gather more results. Now, when Dr. Furman heard about Augusto's tests, he put his hands over his ears. He didn't want to hear anymore. He brought up a different test that's totally irrelevant, that doesn't measure the same thing at all. He starts talking instead about the effect of nuts in people eating the standard American diet on brachial artery function. But discussing a different test doesn't change the results that Augusto experience with nuts. It just changes the subject. Here's the thing. Nuts are healthy and nuts and other foods can impact or stress our artery. That's what it looks like. But the human body is designed to accept levels of stress, including to arteries, and it can recover elegantly. My discussion about pulse wave velocity is intended for people with heart disease. People with heart disease have compromised arteries and heart disease kills it kills a lot of people. It's very, very dangerous. So people with heart disease want to pay attention to anything that could increase their risk or lower their risk. They want to err on the side of caution, just as Dr. Greger himself strongly advises. If I had heart disease, if I had a patient that had heart disease, if I had a loved one that had heart disease, you don't make them into guinea pigs. You don't mess around. We have data from these randomized control trials. You put people on a whole food, plant-based diet that's low in fat, you reverse their disease. That's the data we have. And so what do you do? You go on that diet. You go on the diet that's proven to work. So it's important to remember the context of this discussion is for people with heart disease. And it's about not making yourself into a guinea pig with nuts or with unproven diets. Now, Dr. Furman was triggered by my mentioning one of his star patients who died young. He writes, then Mr. Nelson repeats over and over again in his videos that it is likely why one of my severely ill patients died young because she ate nuts, which he is lying about. That's not what I actually said. Here's what I actually said. But we know that this patient of Dr. Furman's died in her sleep, which is most often due to heart disease. But we don't know if that is actually the cause in her case. You know, we can't say it might have been, it might be something else. But if it were related to her heart, the results of this pulse wave velocity could provide a potential explanation for that early death. As you can see, I did not say, as Dr. Furman reports, that his patient died young because she ate nuts. Rather, I speculated, just like Dr. Greger speculates about nuts, based on some preliminary information we've learned about arterial stiffening in healthy vegans through nuts. 
Dr. Furman may be upset that I bring up the early death of one of his patients whom he held up as a success in his case studies of heart disease, but Dr. Furman is more direct than I am about blaming a patient's death on their doctor. Dr. Esselstyn, years ago, went to the extraordinary length of putting up a page on his website rebutting Dr. Furman's claims. Here is what Dr. Esselstyn wrote. Just recently, a story has resurfaced on the internet that one of my original patients died because he was not offered nuts in my nutrition program. Dr. Furman was the first to incorrectly make this assumption several years ago, which he presented at a meeting without full knowledge of the facts. I immediately called him when I learned of this to correct his misrepresentation. I am unaware that he has publicly retracted his mistaken belief. Here are the facts. And then Dr. Esselstyn goes on and talks about this patient who was given six to 12 months to live, but who reversed his heart disease and lived another five or six years longer, not six months. Dr. Esselstyn describes the circumstances and then ends saying, a lack of nuts was not part of this story. I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you'd like to read this entire post. I've been contacted very recently by people who said they've attended a talk by Dr. Furman where he publicly criticized the work of his colleague, Dr. Esselstyn, and scaremongered that Dr. Esselstyn's diet should be avoided. I think it's very fair to talk about the early death of Dr. Furman's heart disease study patients. Dr. Furman is not the only person permitted to make public observations or to speculate about why a patient died. Next, Dr. Furman made this table in his article listing some nut studies. Do you know what a document dump is? What that means is when you overwhelm someone with documents. Maybe there's one relevant document that they need to give you, but instead they give you a huge pile of documents, basically bury you with meaningless bullshit. Well, this table of Dr. Furman's that he made here, to me, it's just like that. It's like the lawyer in the clip that I played who gave the judge an overflowing folder of takeout menus to try to create the appearance to the jury that he had something real. But it's showboating. When I made my first response to Dr. Furman's first article about my nut videos, I ended up by saying this. Is Dr. Furman gonna to respond to this video today by listing another 20 or 30 weak industry-funded association studies and you know try to keep promoting nuts that way? And that's exactly what Dr. Furman did, except he apparently went to some lengths to find some studies that weren't paid for by the nut industry. He was able to find 14 out of the hundreds or perhaps thousands of nut studies that have been done. He found a few that were not financed directly by the nut industry. But when you take a closer look, you see that some of these studies were conducted by researchers who are on the nut industry payroll, the study payroll, so you might call this indirect funding. But it really is a waste of time to argue weak association studies with Dr. Furman or anyone. We know for a fact that researchers have created randomized controlled trials to really see if nuts conferred benefits of these kinds for heart disease or if longevity, like those suggested by these association studies, researchers have not been able to confirm what the association studies suggest. Nuts do not perform well in the lab when they're put to the test. They only show minor improvements in cholesterol or LDL and so on. This is why Dr. Furman must depend on these weak population association studies. Dr. Furman also says that the studies he cites are not old, but most of them are. Even the one he cites from 2018 is using old data from 2002 to 2007. It was published in 2018, but it looked at 12-year-old data from Adventist 2 study. And when you look at that study, it's a study that examined nuts versus meat. It found that nuts are better and healthier than meat. Well, I would hope so. That doesn't mean nuts are a superfood, as Dr. Furman claims. This is what esteemed cardiologist Kim Williams said about nut research just last week. Dr. Williams is past president of the American College of Cardiology. I know that nuts are controversial. Uh, for a, a lot of folks, there are people who violently say that you absolutely have to have them, and then other people are just as strong saying that you shouldn't. I would love to see randomized trials, not where you're looking at substitutionary benefit. I know the Adventists say that you change your meat to uh, nuts and you improve your outcome. That doesn't, you know, is that because if you take cyanide and replace it with arsenic, you're going to do better? You definitely will do better, okay? But that doesn't mean that the arsenic's good for you. So it may be the nuts are still bad, but 
uh, let's compare it with something other than meat where that's just a terrible comparison. Um, so we don't have that data, um, but we have people saying that, you know, this is an absolute must, you have to do them. Well, I, where do I draw the line? Because they have a fair amount of fat, I tend not to give them to people who are obese. And uh, um, so, but if you, if you look at the data that we have, as weak as it may be, um, you know, because they're observational trials rather than prospective and randomized, um, you do have good data that whole grains and uh, even nuts, fruits, berries, um, uh, beans, uh, despite all of that lectin stuff that people are putting out there, do improve outcomes significantly. Further down in his article, Dr. Furman writes about his conflict of interest of making money selling supplements, and this conflict was not revealed when his article was published, the article which concluded that vegan athletes should buy supplements. Dr. Furman writes, in my 2010 review article on vegan athletes, my affiliation with drfurman.com and the sale of products and services were revealed when the article was submitted, contrary to what Mr. Nelson claims. The journal chose to post from, quote, drfurman.com, unquote, right at the top of the article. It was eight years later, only after a complaint that came from a person who represented this low-fat vegan group, that the journal posted a fuller explanation in response. Well, I'm afraid that's just provably false. Dr. Furman's original article on vegan athletes needing supplements, that was published in the July-August 2010 edition of this journal. Here is the article, and there's no drfurman.com at the top or any other disclosure about conflicts in the article. This is the website for the journal. This is where the article was published. This is the journal it appears in, but there's no mention of drfurman.com in the article. Moreover, simply putting drfurman.com somewhere in the article, that would not constitute a conflict disclosure. Just putting a website in an article, that's not the same as stating that the author of this article profits from the sale of the same supplements his article says you need to buy. But that was in the correction that the journal posted, stating that also a disclosure omission was detected. The lead author, Joel Furman, MD, profits financially from the sale of supplements promoted in the article. And you can see this was published the very next month in September, October 2010, that edition of the journal. It shows the date it was published about one month later, not eight years later, as Dr. Furman now contends. Dr. Furman is claiming that there's some low fat boogeyman who is part of this same group or some such that this person complained eight years after his article was published and the journal published their explanation eight years later. That's, that's all false. And you don't have to choose who to believe. You can just look at the journals and you can see the dates and see that Dr. Furman's story is wrong. This whole fiction that someone who represented the low-fat vegan group was complaining eight years later. First, if that were true, how would Dr. Furman even know who complained, you know, if someone actually had? What is this low-fat vegan group anyways? Is it the same group I'm in, supposedly? A group of one person that's not really a group? Dr. Furman omitted his conflict of interest while doing commercial research that benefited his business. There was no group, there was no vegan conspiracy. And what about his two newer studies that he did where he didn't reveal conflicts with his supplement sales there? Recently, someone sent me this slide of Dr. Furman giving a talk somewhere in the East Coast. And it looks like it says, extremely low-fat vegans taking risks for better health. And it has numbers. I can't see the slide completely, but pieces of it. And it looks like it says, number one, failure to thrive. Number two, unsafe for pregnant and nursing. Number three, potential risk for depression and dementia. Number four, nuts and seeds, something intake proven to enhance longevity and reduce all-cause mortality. So from this slide, I gather that if you don't eat nuts, if you don't buy Dr. Furman's book and follow his nutritarian diet, if you don't buy his supplements because apparently his diet has deficiencies, then you're going to get demented, you're going to die young. That's, that's what he's saying here. Dr. Esselstyn, who is 85 years old and still traveling the world regularly and giving lectures and helping patients and others like Dr. Esselstyn, they are headed for dementia and an early death, according to Dr. Furman. Dr. Campbell, another 85-year-old, is heading for trouble if he's not following Dr. Furman's advice, according to Dr. Furman.
Now, Dr. Furman claims that his practice has been flooded with people over decades who ate the diet of another vegan doctor, and now they're dying and they're losing their mind and they're melting down in his office, maybe by the hundreds. I don't know. They saw the light and they came running to Dr. Furman to save them. This reminds me of McCarthyism. You know, Joe McCarthy, he claimed that there were 205 card-carrying communists who had infiltrated the U.S. government, but he could never actually show even one. The same is true for Dr. Furman. I mean, if there were actually hundreds or scores or even dozens of people coming to Dr. Furman over the decades, as he claims, and they were all reporting that they'd followed, for example, the diet of Dr. Esselstyn, and now they were depressed. Uh, they said they'd had neurological testing and showing they had dementia. They were keeling over, you know, young, dying young, as Dr. Furman claims. Wouldn't Dr. Furman have a moral or ethical obligation, or even as a medical professional, to publish a couple of dozen case studies to show this? It would be like if you were a mechanic and you discovered by having to do the same repairs again and again, that let's say a 2015 Toyota Camry had problems, had a dangerous design flaw. Wouldn't you be obligated to try to report this to the authorities in order to protect other people? Doesn't Dr. Furman have an ethical, morally, or even medical obligation to publish some case reports here? Or is he just interested in slamming what he may see as his competition, other healthcare professionals? My understanding is that Dr. Furman stopped seeing patients himself around 2009, and he hired another doctor, a guy named Dr. Jay Benson, to take over his New Jersey practice. Dr. Furman hasn't actually been seeing any regular patients for the past decade, I'm told. I'm told he still answers questions on his paid forums and that he sees people at his getaway retreats in San Diego. There is a lot of research on the low-fat, high-starch, plant-based diet of the Okinawans who ate about 6% of calories from fat. They ate almost no nuts. They ate 1% to 2% of calories from fish and pork, but the fat was all removed from the pork that they ate. And uh, they've lived longer than anyone else on the planet, according to Blue Zones researchers. The Okinawans, of course, they were eating a lower fat diet than the low fat vegan doctors recommend today. But there are decades of research on Ornish, Pritikin, PCRM, and Esselstyn. All of these years, where is the research on the nutritarian diet? I know Dr. Furman used an online questionnaire where people could give anonymous answers and report what benefits that they say they got uh, eating plant-based. But this is really, you know, not very reliable data. I don't think anonymous responses is in publishing this kind of data. Uh, it's not high quality at all compared to the research that's done on real people. Carefully documented studies of the low-fat diet have been going on since the 1940s with Dr. Morrison and with Dr. Kempner, and they're still going on today. I don't know of any population that follows a nutritarian diet. No Adventists follow a nutritarian diet that I know of. And most of that data from the Adventist studies, that was collected before Dr. Furman stopped recommending the low-fat diet and came up with his own diet. So nutritarian is a theory that Dr. Furman invented, borrowing some concepts from natural hygiene and plant-based diets. They are healthy for sure, but it doesn't have the decades of testing and research behind it that Pritikin, Ornish, and Esselstyn and the others have. So that is my opinion, and that's the video for today. Please give it a like and a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, remember to hit subscribe and the bell so you'll get notifications when I put up a new video. I'm making more videos these days. Thanks very much for watching.